Okay, let's have some fun with some photo stamping. Um, I really enjoy adding a lot of uh, effects with the white pigment ink in my scenes, usually for clouds, um, embellishments on clouds, because I'm stamping on cloud photo uh, photographs for the most part with all of my uh, uh, photo stamping projects here. But um, one of the things I really enjoy doing is um, adding some effects, those frosty types of... Uh, churning water effects uh, in waterfall scenes with the pigment ink. So I thought we would try that here on photo stamping. Okay, now I'm guessing this photograph is probably uh, the configuration of this. I don't know, for some reason this looks top and bottom to me, but I'll use it like this because I want, I often like the, the base of my waterfall areas to be in a lighter area. Now we're working with an existing background right here so you have to kind of work around the uh, you know what the, the parameters of the photograph so you know uh, when it comes to these uh, just general cloud types of things you can con uh, configure it in whichever um, direction you want to place it and this would be really good for some light beams coming out this way too but for this scene we'll do this because I like this lighter area down here and that's where um, that churning water is going to be right in here. I'm going to lose some of this right up here because it's going to be dark and I like to have um, my water generally lighter than my surrounding area and that kind of creates this um, visual lead-in into the scene having these areas lighter like it is in the design like that but that's going to be stamped over this darker area so I'm going to lose that aspect of the uh, of the lead-in, you know, this uh, lighter area. Okay, now I'm going to do this uh, side falls large here in the corner. This is just standard dye-based ink. Black dye-based ink. You can use a stazon or, you know, your solvent inks or whatever, but you don't necessarily need to. Dye-based inks dry on photo paper just fine, and that's what this is right here. I just had this print... Um, run at a Costco. Um, if you don't have a printer, a lot of people don't have printers these days, you know, when uh, kind of a digital photography came out and uh, a lot of people were transitioning from film to um, digital. A lot of people had printers, but I'm finding that a lot of people don't have printers anymore. A lot of people don't even have uh, computers, and you might be watching this on the iPhone or a tablet or something like that, but usually if you don't have a pr uh, computer, you wouldn't have a printer, so a lot, uh, lot less uh, actual prints are being run, hard copy prints these days, at home at least, so um, uh, like me, for example, I my wife has a printer, but I don't. I can use hers, yeah, but... Um, I just have a black and white laser uh, printer for my uh, for the orders that come in. Okay, so side falls large. I didn't use the whole thing. I just used a half of it right here. But what I was getting at is you can have these run at you know your Walgreens or you know a lot of these stores still have their print centers. Okay, it might just be a printer, or you can take in your hard copy media, or you can just upload it over the uh, you know the, uh, internet and. Uh, you know, they print out at those places and you just go and pick them up, you know, at your local um, print center. So the Costco print center during this whole lockdown, at least at my local one, is closed, but um, you might have some other options out there. And all of these photographs that I'm using, and I'll put a link for it down below, are on my Flickr account. I mean, you can look up, I, this is just, you know, my... Um, photograph collection, but you can, there's probably a million photographs of skies. Okay, I'm going to wipe off the bottom of this right here just to create this slightly more graceful transition at the bottom of this, okay? So I wiped off some of this right here, so it's drier on the stamp, and it'll stamp out lighter down here. I didn't wipe off the whole thing, I just wiped off the bottom portion, because I want that to be nice and kind of frosty and, uh, you know, kind of billowy in terms of the uh, that water churning, okay? Now, if we don't wipe it off like that, we can always compensate with a little bit more white pigment ink applications down in that area in the end, but you can give yourself a nice head start um, 
just by simply wiping something off. When you wipe it off, you won't have to uh, kind of uh, apply so much of that white pigment ink that would, in a sense, do the same type of thing. So you're saving yourself uh, some time along the process. So you can see these rocks up here are a little bit darker than these ones down here. So see how that kind of just transitions out like that really nicely. So right there we have our churning water, okay? And, I mean, I could fill in this area right here if I want to. Um, ledge stamp or something like that. I, I'm, I'm going to leave it as is. And a matter of fact, I thought about adding a little cabin back in this area, but I don't think I will. Okay, so... Um, we can add more to this if we want to. I can add some, maybe some foreground trees. Sometimes it's nice to have a change of um, scale within a scene. Um, to have something a little bit closer to us in the foreground. And then, you know, leading eye type of things. You have the same types of forms in the background. And that creates um, kind of repetition and pattern and scale within the piece. Okay, so that repetition of um, shape like this creates that visual continuity. It's the same thing as a designer. They use color and texture and patterns and contrasts and that, but they have these types of things repeated throughout, you know, a given space. You know, if it's a house or something like that, like a model house, you see that thing, you know, those same types of colors and patterns repeated, you know, in choice of paints for a room, you know, pillowcases, bedding, wall color, whatever. You know, there's a lot of repetition. <laughs> That's the model house, though. Usually in our houses, it's not quite so, you know, uh, cohesive, because, you know, we put together our houses over, you know, a period of years, you know, and whatnot, so there's a lot of mismatching, but I notice it all when I go into, uh, you know, looking at these model houses or whatever, watching these videos on model houses. I don't know, I started watching a lot of those types of things lately. For some reason, I'm not moving. Okay, so anyways, here's our kind of basic format right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in here next and um, uh, fill in these areas, these rocks in here. We're going to model them with um, some alcohol pens, okay? Now you can use other types of pens, markers, like uh, your water-based markers. I like using the alcohol ones because alcohol and water don't mix, so there's less of a kind of a chance of things um, smearing in here, although this dries pretty fast. Now, I just re-inked my black pad not too long ago and um, some of these areas in here that have a lot of solid black might you know have a little bit of residual moisture in it but this um, emulsion coating on this um, photographic paper um, seems to absorb your water-based media really quickly and uh, so it dries fairly quickly so I don't really worry about um, kind of smearing or whatnot or if I go over it a little bit and starts to smear a little bit I'm not really worried about it because what it does is it kind of blends in with that ink anyway and you can utilize it for your toning and uh, modeling processes okay let me see here for the intro for this video I'm gonna take a photograph of this so we can see kind of a before and after. okay so here's the concept here with our coloring. In all of my designs that are tonal, some of them are solid shape, but in forms like this, objects that represent three-dimensional um, forms uh, that aren't solid darks like this, like trees or something like that, all have these stippled dots, okay? And those stippled dots are revealing or they're they're describing I should say um, the types of forms within these spaces right here is this shape um, rounded like a balloon or something like that or does it have angles and shapes and whatnot and if they do then they are toned accordingly okay so in a lot of these things I have you know top to bottom lighting they're top lit so on the bottom sides of them or on the vertical edges, you see areas that are darker, okay? 
So instead of seeing this rock as a, you know, like a circle or a shape, okay, think of it as a volume, okay, and observe the areas that are darker and the areas that are lighter. And that's the way that you're going to approach your coloring, okay? You're not just going to color in this whole thing, at least with all the inks that you're doing. You might color it in some color, you know, to begin with, but then you're going to use your darker tones in the darker areas only, okay? So that these objects still seem three-dimensional, you know, as opposed to kind of flattening them out with a, with a um, consistent application of media over the entire thing. Now, what does that mean? Okay, so on the scene right here, let's go for some rocks. I'm going to go for some gray tones, maybe some a warmer tone like this. Here we go right here. So these different tones of gray, different shades of it, different values. You can even throw your um, blender pin in there if you want to. You can put whatever kind of colors you want on there. Here's some brown if you want. Um, I don't know. I, I'm thinking of granite, something of that sort. You can use in some blues, kind of uh, reflecting um, from the sky colors. It'll give a little bit of continuity. But things like this. All right. Now these are alcohol markers. The alcohol markers. Alcohol markers. I tell you, these days can be really inexpensive with the uh, with the popularity of the adult coloring books. I don't know if that market's still quite as popular. I, th I think it might be. I'm not sure. But um, a lot of these other companies came out with, you know, double-sided markers and whatnot. These ones are about 40 to 50 cents each, and they are loaded with alcohol inks. You know, some of them, you know, I mean, they're, they might not be as good as a $5, you know, pen and Reinkable, but uh, when they're so inexpensive, you can really, you know, get quite a few of them, even if it's a color that you don't use very often. Okay, so um, as far as coloring goes, okay, now I'm testing this out to see what value of gray this is. That's a pretty close indication, you know, that um, indexing right there. But uh, always test out on a, you know, a piece of paper and see what you're working with. All right, now let's see what we're going to do here. Now, some of these areas are already fairly dark because I've stamped it over this photograph in the background, right? So, like in here, we don't have, like, the white of, you know, like a white paper or something like that. So, it's already fairly dark, but... So, I might take a color like this and go into this area like this, and it might not even show up because this color is lighter than that background. But this should show up in some of those areas. So watch how I'm doing this. I'm applying this kind of on the bottom sides of some of these rocks. And you can see how easy this is. It's not a big commitment to this value whatsoever. It's very light. Okay. See this rock right here? I'll just kind of slather that with some of that ink. It probably, in some of these areas, it probably just added like 1% of, you know, tone to it. It's very, very pale. All right, I don't want that chisel tip one. These ones right here that are really inexpensive just come with this kind of fine tip right here, that bullet tip, as opposed to the brush marker tip. But it works for me just fine. I do prefer the brush marker tip um, than this one, but, you know. I can live with it at 40, 50 cents. I'm frugal, you know, so if something requires, you know, a certain expenditure, then I'll make it, you know, because I'm going after a certain type of, of look. But um, if it comes to real similar media and one's like 10 times more, then I just get the uh, cheaper one usually. And then I just get more, you know, a variety of different colors because I have more to uh, work with that way. Okay, so adding this in, this is fairly dark now. It's leaving kind of a harsh line, much more than I'd want in here. But, like I said, I can just all blend all this together. So you can see that in the areas right in here, where I've really kind of blocked it off like that. When you make an area darker next to something lighter, it makes the area that's lighter seem even lighter by contrast. So some of these areas, you know, 
in the background are fairly dark, so it made my imagery dark, but adding darker tones into it makes these areas, again, lighter. See, that's not light right there, not like that, but if I put this dark farm next to it, that seems lighter by contrast. Okay, so I like to go in here and just blend these things out. This is a very light kind of bluish gray right here. It's called blue-gray. Okay, I thought it was called cool gray or something like that. So you, you kind of go into these um, darker tones, and by going into them a little bit and just kind of blending it out, what that does is it puts the previous color that you've laid down back into solution and it blends out. Now that, you can't really do that with dye based inks, so you can a little bit, but they're kind of, you know, set. But something like this with the alcohol inks, no problem. You don't like something, you just blend it right out. Now this isn't blending out exactly how I want it to, but if it doesn't, you just go into a lighter tone, okay? So see, that's still fairly dark right there, and I want an even more kind of a mellow transition. Let's try this one right here. This is a pale blue, okay? It's almost white, or almost clear, I should say. So see, like this, and I can blend it even more, okay? It's almost like an, acting like an eraser, but not really, because it's just kind of blending some of those tones out. to the uh, waterfall a little bit with this pale blue. It's super pale blue. I can barely see it. Okay, this is a La plume permanent alcohol pen. And you do, you do pick up some of the colors, you know, that you've already laid down on here, but just do a little swirl like that and it'll come right off. Blending in, blending out, coloring, highlighting, okay? See so if some of those areas on the top of the darker areas kind of lost some of that lighting aspect, then you just go right back into it and just kind of add that in there. <laughs> Like I said, it's like an eraser. It's not really erasing it, though. It's kind of just blending that ink out, or it's putting it back into solution and kind of making it run, but... It's really fun being able to uh, do that, and, you know, have that type of capability with a given medium. You can do all kinds of things with those um, textures that are uh, created. See that little rock down there? So how I've gone back in, it's... It's almost like melting it. To me, it has the feeling of going back like into wax or something like that, like an encaustics, and uh, just going in and you know removing something. It feels like it's melting it because it's putting that ink back into solution, and it's just kind of spreading out. But you know, without having to use like encaustic heat, you know, and kind of having less control. All right, so you see what's happening in here on these rocks? See that those rocks seem a little bit more dimensional now. See that area's light, and you have this area that's down here. It's darker. There's modeling kind of going on in here. It's not, you know, it, I mean, you could go for more dramatic, um, you know, changes within here. Okay, now I'd, I'm moving into a little bit of green right here for this, some of this area. It just changes the hue a little bit. Now, I'm not necessarily going for a color glow here, but I just talked about in my previous video, um, you know, how to achieve this illusion of a color glow. This will be, you know, somewhat of a very subtle one, if anything. But where you put blues next to greens, it creates a color glow. So, I don't know if you can see it in here. It's just a really subtle kind of addition of the hue right next to it. Blue on the color wheel, which is green. So it creates a little bit of this color glow, and, but this is a very light green, so it's not a, you know, an extreme glow by any means. It's super, super subtle. Okay, now I still want some variation in here, so let's try, let's try this one right here. You can't see too much. Maybe I already tried it. 
let's go to a brighter so you have to kind of keep moving up you know if you want things to be a little bit more visible okay that one's pretty good right here so what I'm doing is this see thick to thin thick to thin thick to thin I'm not going like that and then up just like that okay so that's as it moves down this waterfall okay that and that kind of goes along with the spirit of the design it's kind of flowing down like that you want it to flow down nice and naturally but it doesn't have to be though too because you can always go back in if it's too harsh right no that's not too harsh but you can just go back in here and just blend those out a little bit more okay super forgiving uh, type of uh, coloring method here Right. So I don't know. Let's try a little bit of a brown tone on some of these rocks. How's that? I'll just kind of blend it in. It kind of adds a little bit of warmth. I'm finding. I don't know if it'll kind of merge on there and make some of these kind of look muddy. You know, having blues and greens and browns on there, but. You know, you can always just try it out and see if you like it. If you like it, then add more. If you do add some of it, though, you kind of have to kind of spread it around a little bit. Because if I just do one dot of brown right there, it's going to look out of place. So you have to kind of test it a little bit. All right, but I'm starting with a very light color, so it's not an extreme by any means. Um, in order for that kind of trial... Let me go to my blender here. I'm going to blend out some of that. See what I do? I keep going kind of dark, and then I go light again to, uh, to kind of blend everything in. I don't use my blender pen too often, but... In this case, it looks pretty good here, or it's working really good. So see these little subtle changes right within here? What do we have? You can see the greens. You can see the little browns, grays for sure, some blues in there. Okay. I could probably tone some of these out a little bit more to achieve a, a deeper contrast. Well, let's try that. Let's go to... Here's that gray again. Let's add some of this down and kind of the bottom parts of some of these rocks uh, just to deepen the shadows a little bit more. When you kind of add these um, darker tones in some areas to some of these shadows it it just tends to make things look you know a lot more three-dimensional and varied and then I'm going to go over this a lot with the, uh, the pigment ink so the white pigment ink will lighten up some of these areas so Kind of have to go a little bit darker than what might look ideal just on its own. You know, because it's going to be, you know, lightened up quite a bit. So you can go a little bit darker here, or a lot darker. You'd be amazed at what that pigment ink can do on these pieces. Um, it can make something looks good, look really good, or make it even something look that's bad looking without it look really good too. It's because um, it can hide your um, kind of weaker areas or some of the weaker areas by contrast with having kind of a different texture on there. Now suddenly sometimes the weaker areas or the weaker aspects to a certain area suddenly become the strength of it by having its complementary kind of texture and value added in there. So in other words, we have dark and harsh sometimes contrast against soft and light, okay? But one of them without the other can look kind of awkward, but together, because they complement each other, kind of create a visual harmony. Okay, so anyways, yeah, see some of these rocks See, those areas seem a little bit more three-dimensional. When you color like this, too, you give, um, 
these areas in here structure too. Um, they just look more kind of three-dimensional by having some of that visual weight on them. You know, you're fleshing them in. It's, there's already, you know, a certain amount of values within the drawings themselves. I render them as far as I could take them, you know, with pen and ink. But then I leave, you know, some of these other things too, you know, um, an individual's kind of aesthetic choices. So I try to, when I do these designs, I don't want to define everything so much so that, you know, we can only utilize them in one way. We want all the variations and kind of personal aesthetics, you know, to be wide open in terms of your treatment and your, your handling of the imagery, you know, the colors you use, the amount of textures you put on, what media you're using. And we want that to be left up to you because that's where kind of personal expression comes in. Okay, so this is going quite, you know, a bit darker right here. I'm just kind of doing it, you know, in those deeper shadow areas, and I'm just kind of aiming for the shadows, you know, within the design. Look for the darker areas of the design. So a lot of it, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of doing these little stipple types of things like that, okay? I'm also giving these rocks some texture now. Actually, this this is where it's all kind of coming together really nicely. Okay, so let's go back to the blue-gray. Or did I use that? I don't know. And I'll go into the... I'll do these same types of textures now with a lighter tone within those darker ones. So we'll kind of blend those out a touch or blend them in. I don't want to eradicate them, which I could still with this, but... Uh, I just want it, you know, a few complementary light on dark now, instead of all dark on light. All right, so that, yeah, that worked really good. That was going with a, quite a bit of a darker gray in there for the shadows. Okay. All right, let's see. Let me take a photo of this for a progress uh, shot. Okay, let's go in now <laughs> with the part that I uh, probably have the most fun with. Well, okay, here. <clears throat> I also have fun with the white paint pen. It's an acrylic painter pen. Now there's, I don't know, there might be a dozen brands with the same pen on, like Amazon. Um, they look all the same to me because the barrel looks the, sa the same. But there's just a different label on it, okay? This one's the Meows. And, um, but there's a lot of pens that look exactly like this, and I have a feeling they're all coming out of the same manufacturer plant, but they just put a different label on it. Uh, different labels from different companies, or it could be just the same company that, you know, they're trying to get a larger market share, so they just, you know, have a ton of different names on them. So, you know, someone's going to make a choice between, you know, one brand and another, you know, they might, it could all be the same um, company, you know, just marketing it as a different brand. I don't know. I don't know. I know some places do that. Not, I'm not necessarily saying these guys do, but um, a lot of those pens do look very much the same. Same thing with the alcohol markers, too. Okay, so adding some highlights. Okay, so we added darker areas, right, in the shadows. Now, like on the top sides of some of these rocks, I'm adding a little highlight effects. So you add dark in the shadows, and you add light in the highlights, the lighter areas. So, going back to what I was saying, I've made a lot of these rocks top lit. So I'm putting some top lighting on it, some top highlighting like so. You don't have to do it over all of it, but you know, kind of hold it out at arm's distance and take a look and see what, you know, what your little dots are kind of looking like, you know, from distance. You know, so you go like that. You know, 
you tend to be working it, you know, we work at it like this. See those top highlights like that? I'll add some up here too and up here. But then you, you know, pull out and take a look at it periodically. Because sometimes these little dots can be very, very influential, you know, in a scene. You know, they really stand out, especially in the darker areas, so... You don't want to add so much where it looks like Christmas lights or something like that, unless you're going for, you know, that type of look. It can look cool to have, you know, a crazy amount of it. It's like the electric light parade, you know, Disneyland or something like that. But, um, you know, if you get that type of, if you're going for that type of, you know, thing, that's fine. But um, it's better than kind of adding something in there and then, you know, realizing later, you know, I might have added way too many. Because then you just have to, you know, go and try to remove them, which you can to some extent. The white gel pen is much more removable than um, of a of a media than um, this white acrylic pen. This white acrylic pen is supposed to be able to be used on any surface. It says uh, glass, uh, paper, skin. Oh, I don't know why I draw on skin. Uh, cloth, metal, and plastic. So, you know, I don't. I guess it's kind of permanent. Okay, so cotton ball and white pigment ink. Okay, getting quite a bit. Of, just got on my finger, um, and I'm going to blot some of it off. Okay, and churning water right in here, right? So in the lighter areas where light meets dark, okay? Where does white meet dark? Light meet dark in here. Light meets dark right in these rocks right around in here, right? That's where this looks really effective, okay? So let's just start it in some of those lighter areas. What you do is you start it in the lighter areas and then you kind of work into those darker objects or areas right next to it. So start in the lighter area like this. This is when your applicator is going to be the most wet with, you know, ink, right? So let's get it in there first. That, this is a way you can kind of prevent, you know, a big blob of paint, too. You kind of, you blot a lot of it off first in those lighter areas where you can't really see it. And then you kind of start moving it into these darker areas like this, okay? You transition it. You want to use a really light touch where you can barely see any change with each tap. Can you see that starting to glow right in there? It's because I'm kind of transitioning light in there, you know, in the form of that white um, pigment ink, okay? Now see this rock right in here? I mean, it looks fine as is, but when you just kind of add a little bit of this down there, it really puts kind of a, a mist into the air, doesn't it? And when you do that, I think this scene right here, there, it, you're adding kind of movement into a beast. You're saying that the water is churning, so it tends to take on a much more three-dimensional type of feeling because you're putting moisture in the air between that distance there and ourselves. So we're saying that there's something in between. See these trees right down here in the foreground? Let's remember where light meets dark? Let's put a little of this like that. Now doesn't that look like light is hitting that tree? Let's do it on this one right here. See that right there? It gives variation to that. My cotton ball's getting better and better as I do this too. It was a little bit too juicy in the beginning, so kind of wiping it off like that. Tapping it off down there really works well. In fact, there still might be a little bit too much juice. Be careful with your pigment ink pads. A lot of your pigment ink pads are just super juicy, so, you know, maybe you know, tap off a lot of it or just don't tap on so much to begin with. Okay, so look at this area out here. There's not a lot of white in here, okay? because I stamped it over a dark area to begin with, but 
You can add some of this in here to get that same type of frosty type of feel, misty, foggy, whatever. Okay, see it right down in there. Look at this rock right here. See how defined it is? I, I mean, I like it like that as is, but I like this too. You put a little bit of this mist right into that rock. You can still see the rock, right? It's still translucent, but doesn't it seem kind of more incorporated in with the surrounding area when you do something like that? You're saying that light is hitting it and influencing what we see. This area up here is really well defined, but look at this. There's an opportunity right here where there's a lighter background and darker images in the foreground. I'll show you what I like to do in those areas. I like to kind of push those types of uh, objects in the distance back a little ways with some additional lighting on them. Now don't they look kind of farther back in the distance when you do that? It's just so much fun. You're manipulating space, you're adding media on here, but you're really manipulating space quite a bit. You know, you're pushing things farther back. And I mean, I might put some mist right here and suddenly, you know, we have our, some mist closer to us. So you're putting some mist right here, you're adding more foreground, right? Because if it's this lighter, you're saying there's mist in between us and the tree. But then when you put it back here, it pushes those trees farther back as well. So there's all kinds of things, different uh, types of things that are happening with that space. Okay, in the clouds where light means dark up here, we can add that same type of uh, um, touch into some of the most distant spaces. You know, if we have clouds in a scene or a background of clouds. And it adds that same texture to those areas like so. If you do this, if you haven't watched my other videos where I've mentioned this, but I've found that 100% um, cotton, cotton balls work so much better. This one's kind of a cheaper brand too. I need to go get some more. I'm trying to go at as little as possible usually these days, but um, I don't know. I'm not really worried about it too much, but it's just kind of a hassle. It's more of a hassle getting all that stuff on. I'm taking it on and off every time I go into a store. Okay, but see, I'm kind of adding that right back in there. See these areas out here. Let's let's continue that cloud up here. Okay. So you can kind of build your clouds too. This, you know, I had an existing cloud photograph, but you can kind of expand on you know these areas as well. kind of joked with someone uh, I don't know, a few months ago we were talking about kind of repurposed existing stuff being sold as you know some kind of crafting tool I said you know we're gonna get uh, you know a package of uh, cotton balls and repackage them and you know packs of like 10 and call them blending clouds just as a joke you know I would never do something like that but I don't know I wouldn't put it past uh, someone to do something like that. Okay, so kind of adding that texture right back in there. See, I'm kind of adding it right in here. See it, instead of this all looking like it's on the same um, plane, you know, distance-wise, you, do, you lighten some of it up. Don't those trees look... Um, more distant than these ones. Scale plays a little bit, but too. I mean, those ones are, you know, light, uh, smaller in the background, but now they're also lighter, so it kind of pushes them back, like, you know, like I said. Let's get some of this in here like this. Add a little bit of cloudy formations back there. Yeah, I need to go get some better cotton balls. <laughs> these ones are really these cheap brand it's just at this grocery store, kind of this independent grocery store, and I needed some, and uh, this will save me a trip to Target, but um, I don't know. It's working okay. See, now so there's some right back in here. Let's kind of put some in this area. A cotton swab would be really great, too, for um, some more 
kind of uh, detailed applications of this medium. Okay, so now it's kind of coming alive. The biggest application of media on here, you know, for me is, uh, you know, it's the white pigment ink more than coloring. This is almost like, this is an additional thing. It's an additive process, but it almost feels like you're doing some erasing, you know, on there. You know, like if you went to a chalkboard or something like that and you just kind of tapping on, you know, you know, that chalk, it's, it, it removes a little bit more each time, right? This is almost what it kind of, it feels something akin to kind of a removal, but it's really not. It's adding, you know, you're building up more and more, but, um, I don't know, it's just a, it's, it's kind of a fun process. There's something to this kind of subtractive type of process. Like I said, it's an additive process, but it looks like it's subtracting. I think it utilizes a different hemisphere of the brain or something like that. It's just very relaxing to do. Alright, I think that is about it. Okay. So let's take a look here and see. See these different areas down here? I mean, it, it looks different, doesn't it? You know, from kind of pre-pigment ink and uh, after. Okay, here's a cotton swab. Let me use this on this thing. A couple of different areas, starting the lighter areas and kind of work in the darker areas. So it's several tappings in this one area. Now don't pound this now, okay? I always say, kind of imagine you're applying it onto, a, you know, a child's face or something like that, okay? And you're going to use about that amount of pressure, like a toddler's face, okay? fine-tuning it here. So I can kind of introduce light back up in here. I was mentioning, you know, it would be kind of nice if this was a little bit lighter um, in terms of the photograph, but you can kind of add in that, uh, that lighter um, aspect to it back there just with some pigment ink okay so here you know you can build up a little bit more in very specific areas with you know a smaller applicator like you know a cotton swab if you want to in fact i only used to use the cotton swab before i started using a cotton ball not i don't know not too long ago a year maybe two i was thinking why didn't i use that all along well i used to use a cotton swab but Maybe I'm get, just getting more bold with the uh, usage of it, so I used to keep using kind of more and more of this uh, pigment ink. So I can kind of add a little bit more up there. It looks like the light is hitting it, huh? And you just kind of blend it out. I'm adding more of this than I thought I would. I'm finding that and in some of these areas I really like it, you know, with a little bit more kind of impact uh, in a certain area.
It's almost like it's almost like we're painting or something like that. I almost see I almost see pigment ink as like a paint. No, it's thick like paint, isn't it? Okay. Alright. I think that looks about right. Some fun stuff. It's just a really fun process and I don't know, just the whole coloring part of it is uh feels really interesting to me. Um, kind of blending those alcohol inks around and kind of dissolving them and layering them. And then you go back in and you just kind of uh embellish those areas and make them look even more dimensional and three-dimensional, deeper kind of space. So this is all one design, of course, and this is one design. This one is there. We have three designs in here. But I feel that, you know, within this space right here, you know, from the original impression to the end result, we create a lot of different um, space within this, um, just within this one image right here, by making some areas of it darker, some of it, you know, retain you know retaining whatever lightness there was you know on the surface in this case it's a photograph but we've retained a lot of that lighter area up there but we've darkened in some areas to kind of um, enhance the light that's in there so you make an area on the bottom side of that rock a little bit darker and by contrast the light area on the top seems lighter okay so that's what you're dealing with you're dealing with contrast when you're working in kind of this two-dimensional media you know because we don't have like a, a light bulb in the back of this so all we have to work with is um, different values and the darker you make your values next to the light the lighter the light seem the darker the dark seem you have that contrast working in there okay so anyways uh, thanks again for watching hope you enjoyed it if you like this video hope you hit the like button